Since I'm going to make a track with these new Max for Live Essentials, I think it would make sense to start with the foundation, which for the type of music I make generally means a kick drum. So I'm going to be using the DS synth plugins, the drum synth devices, and I'm going to put them into a drum rack. This is an easy way to program drums if you've never used it before. So it works as a container where I can place different samples or instruments on different drum rack pads that correspond to a configured control surface, such as a push or MPD, etc. So now that I've got my drum rack on a MIDI track, I will go to my Max for Live instrument section in the browser. And I'm going to ignore these drum synth versions. Those are actually older versions. I'm going to look at the brand new DS versions here, DS abbreviated for the same thing. And I'm going to bring DS kick onto C1. And you know what? Maybe I'll bring a second one onto C sharp one. Let's just focus on this first one for now. And in general, when I'm adjusting an instrument, I find it's useful to have some kind of ongoing audio so I don't have to manually trigger the device in order to hear what it's doing. So I'm just going to write a little kick pattern into this MIDI clip. And let's trigger it and take a look at the DS kick. So the drum synth devices are designed to synthesize drum sounds. Not surprising, right there in the name. Why would we want to do this? Well, essentially, it gives me more granular control and in some ways a more pure tone for more electronic styles of music than you might find with samples which can be uh, dependent on the quality with which they were recorded among other things whereas these are generated purely through code and in my opinion sound fantastic so here's the ds kick without further ado one of the more important parameters is the pitch which i can adjust here in hertz but what's interesting is that it displays the note value. So we can actually tune the kick to be harmonically coherent with the rest of our production. So if I want this to be in the key of E, that's pretty low. But we can make it more audible by enabling the click, which gives a slight attack, emphasizing the initial transient. So now that I've done that, I can also increase the pitch envelope amount to make that initial transient more pronounced. So there's minimum envelope. Still sounds good, sounds more like an 808 type of kick, a little flabbier, whereas if I increase the envelope, more punch. So somewhere in the middle, I think, is going to work for me. We can adjust the decay to taste. Again, I want it nice and tidy. Some nice body to it, but not taking up too much space. So here we have a drive function. If you want to give it a little more bite, it's got a built-in drive circuit. And the overtone harmonics can be introduced here as well. And in combination, we can give our kick drum quite a bit of character. Now, if we want to reduce the initial transient, we also have an attack control to soften the onset of the body of the kick. But for most purposes, in my experience, I prefer to leave the attack at zero. So let's bring these down a little bit. I'm going to increase the envelope on this one. And then I'm going to go and play around with the second kick and use it as a bit of a baseline. 